know there's a saying that says, I'm not seeing the world as it really is. I'm seeing the world as I am. So if you are very much a person, then the world is full, seven and a half billion other persons full. But if you are resting from the place of being, somehow you are acting, reacting, interacting with one beingness. Don't give it to the mind to try and make uh, to understand that. It is intuitively understood. It is not even a practice. Even. It is not that you are practising. You can't help it. And so beautiful is the change when you are responding to the isness in each other. Actually, we seem to speak so many languages amongst the Sangha here. But I say our language is consciousness. All the other things, German, French, and they are translations of consciousness. Consciousness is what we are, it is our language, it is our currency. Love is our climate. Just staying in the in the still place that you have discovered. In the beginning I say stay because we have the impression we go. But gradually the effort of staying relaxes into a sort of just an isness of being. And then the efforts to stay, counteracting the the belief that we can go, that will get nullified. You are simply here. It's not anymore you and consciousness. It's not you and the self. You are the self. So when the attacks come, the doubts come. The doubts. You know, I'm not sure. You know, for whom do they come? Should be your question. The reflex is to go to the doubt and what's it about? What's it about? Yeah, it's about this person. Yeah, I trust them. So you're out there. In the in the crime scene, yeah. but really looking at the perceiver, you see, really looking to who am I, you see, who 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 thinks this thing, who is the thinker of this thought, you know, and who is the believer of the thought? Are they the same? If these questions begin to happen in you, already a lot of light is flooding into your life. Because it is going to expose all that is not true. It cannot expose the true, it can only reveal the true, but it will expose the untrue. And when it becomes your heart's dedication, freedom, and Living in the true light of yourself. This spring cleaning, house cleaning becomes a real joy. It's not work. Because each time something is exposed as not true, then it cannot hide anymore in you. Like I say, it's like hiding behind a sheet of glass. It can't. Is it? it is so exposed. How did it go on for so long? Because it was undetected. You even assume this as though this thing crept in and just, you know, kind of moved along with you. So gradually it's kind of merging with your old idea about who you are. And so it sits there nicely. When you get up, he gets up. When you sit down, he sits down. <laughs> Undetected, you see? But gradually, by the power of grace and your satsang, these things are coming up. And as soon as you begin to see them, whoa. Fasten your seatbelt because it's going to be a bumpy ride. Some people may think, "Wow, my th- things were better before," because you know it was better before. No, it was not. It was not better before. See, 
And now you are really coming into the fullness of your life. Because the false is now uncomfortable, it is exposed. And as soon, not only because it is exposed, as soon as you taste the fruit of your own being, that taste, yeah. and then all the taste that was coming through the, the ego mind becomes like stale food for you. Before, ah, it was what a buffet you know, <laughs> from the ego. But now it is like, oh my God, no. You can't bear the environment of personhood after a while. Is this a curse? Yes. yes. <laughs> I will put the question again. <laughs> if you <laughs> maybe your answer is right, I will see. If and when you cannot bear the environment of personhood anymore, when you cannot bear it anymore. Is that a curse? <laughs> I thought I was in the wrong room from here. So no, go ahead. Or you're just super honest or something. <laughs> then alone we can then alone we can bear the bumpy ride because you know you are winning yourself back, isn't it? Yeah, because before we slip into those garments before everybody did it, our parents did it, our friends did it, cousins did it, our companions did it, nobody questioned. But now, in the exposing of that uh, unreal, you know, fraudulent side, it is seen, then somehow you, know, you find yourself, not by choice, almost as though by some reflex, you are back in that old place. And it is good to be there, so you realize, wait, I don't want to be here. This is not who I am. So this is a great beginning of freedom, because if the egoic identity is not acceptable, then its life is on a countdown. You see, it's like that. So sometimes you feel people feel a bit miserable, but they're on the way up. They yeah, so say, you know, no, I can't. Then don't indulge. Don't be, don't be trying to trade with the ego mind. No, there's an intolerance for that. There's no, nothing to talk about. You'll come with the best lollipop. <laughs> you remember? No, not what your lollipop. And so gradually you're reacquiring the taste for your higher nature. You see, like that, and it can take some time because. From the egoic identity, it seems to dress up some old stuff, old ghosts, make them look like you know really pretty now. To, especially when you feel that uh, sometimes a feeling may come that actually the ego side is um, is slipping away, and uh, some some grief is coming. <laughs> grieving for the ego, <laughs> the ego, and grief is coming. There's a feeling like uh, you know you start to reminisce about the good old days and all this kind of stuff. You start to feel well, maybe um, it's moving too fast or something like this. No, just uh, let him go. Let him go. No one that I know of, I have ever heard, has awakened to the truth of themselves and regretted it. He says, Oh my God, I don't like this version of truth, actually. So can I have my old life back? Nobody. Waking up to the truth of who we are makes the ego identity unpalatable. It is only if you keep indulging a little bit with the ego's little tendencies, then this short bridge that you will cross over starts to extend seems to extend that you're still on your life is on the bridge you don't want your life to be on the bridge mm. so this impatience 
with the ego mind. It's it's not bad. Just don't be obsessive, because then you start to pick up an identity of the impatient one. Watch him. Very. He hops about. You know. He hops about. He's a flea. He hops, hops about very easy. And it's not where he, you give him a better position. He's in that better position. So, like that. Doesn't matter how subtle or complex the ego um, manifest. Uh, don't worry, because that which is in you is far transcendental to it. You know, don't feel, oh, I don't have the equipment. I don't know how. No, you don't. You made the choice. I choose the freedom. I choose to be free. You know. A little bit, a little bit on from this, you will even feel the sense that choice between freedom and bondage becomes redundant. Also, do you see that it can happen? Yes. You see, because the self is not free and not bound. That is still within the field of the conceptual, you know, spectrum about the self feeling. Oh, you know, I'm so happy. I'm free. No, no, no. It's beyond that. Beyond free. Beyond bound. Natural, natural state.